Hi, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. I'm at the beautiful club at Mediterra in Naples, Florida. Mo Norman, the great Canadian player, great, great ball striker. We're going to have a look at his swing. I actually got to be around him a fair amount in the 1980s. I'll share a couple of little stories along those lines you might find interesting. So we're going to look at his swing, break it down a little bit from each angle, maybe some things you could apply. A couple of rules at the end of the video I'm going to give you as guidelines what to do when you're trying to copy someone's swing, what things to gravitate towards and what's not. And at the very and talk about the two reasons I think he was such a great ball striker. One of them I've really never heard talked about much. Hopefully you find it interesting. Briefly, if you're new to Scratch Golf Academy, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. Helps us build momentum. Hit the bell there also. You'll be notified every time a new video is coming your way. Also at the App Store, Scratch Golf Academy, free app. Lots of great training tools for you. Swing tempo, warm-ups, putting trainers, lots of good stuff. Okay, Mo Norman on the left there, a young Ernie Els on the right. Let's look at this setup. First off, Mo's got the club much higher than Ernie. He's got his hands a lot higher and the shaft is up in line with his right arm. You'd see the shaft would point to about his chest if you look at that yellow line. Ernie, what I would consider conventional shaft, looks about at his belt buckle and there is a significant angle between the arms and the club shaft. Now, another thing of course is he's standing so much farther from the ball than Ernie. I mean, Ernie's right hand is hitting him about in the mouth. For Mo, it's way out in front of his forehead. He'd have to stand a long way from the ball, though, to get his hands that high, unless he stood super, super tall. So here's the proponents of Mo's swing. They say that's a simple alignment, right arm to club shaft, and that you can return to that. And hey, certainly that's true. Let's look at Ernie Els. Almost any top player with a conventional setup will look a little taller with the shaft or impact, at least on a driver. So at impact, Ernie's club shaft is looking maybe bottom of his chest, Moe's looking right at his chest. So they're actually relatively similar at impact. Is that a major complication for Ernie to do that? I don't really think so. It's a slight complication, you could say, but to me, the negatives of Moe's setup, hands miles from the body and up in a straight line with the club, outweigh the positives obviously it worked for him but we'll talk about that a little bit when we get outside in just a moment why that's a negative for a lot of people let's look briefly at ben hogan <clears throat> good guy to look at let's take mo back to about there ben hogan is one of the very few players with a conventional belt buckle sort of a look that could deliver the shaft of the driver right through that plane i mean that is unbelievable that's not easy to do nick price sergio garcia likely be similar examples in that sense if we back hogan up to there you look though at the shaft angles these two guys are creating they are very very similar so why do I see from here that he's such a great ball striker? Not so much the quirks of his setup, it's how good his swing is. Club responds to body, great body angles, great use of the ground, shaft shallows out. Watch how he stays down in the shot and look at impact for a driver, how open his body is there. I mean, no wonder he hits the ball well. And he stays unusually low in the shot there and then kind of comes up out of it. Okay, let's get outside and have a look. Okay, let's have a look at it from this angle. As we said, stood a long, long way away from the ball, hands very, very high. And sure, there's a certain sense that's a little simpler, but to me, the golf club's really heavy at high speed. If you're standing that far away from it, for most people, not as much support arms to body. I like to see someone with their triceps and upper arms a little more up against their ribs. Another thing as well, we'll look at this view in just a moment here. Another thing, for most people, if they got their hands that high, it would immobilize their wrists, they'd grip it too much in the palm, get too stiff-wristed. Clearly it worked well for Mo, but again, to stand that far from the ball, to stay that low in the shot that long would be hard on most people's back. So I'm a little more in favor of the traditional stuff, but try to copy all the great things, the plane he had in the body rotation. Reason I got to be around Mo a little bit, he used to, be, used to live with a family in Daytona Beach in the 1980s, maybe a little longer than that in the winter. I played the Florida Mini Tours, and when we were over on that part of the state, He'd show up, he'd materialize at tournaments. He didn't typically play, not in my years, but he would be out there hitting balls a lot. So he got an opp opportunity to get around and watch him hit a lot of balls. Great to watch. One time I remember 
I actually had him watch me hit a couple. He made some comment about my lower body motion, which I'm afraid I don't remember, but it was something to do with my lower body motion. Another time I was talking to him and he was, he said, hey, listen, I've written a lot of this stuff down. I'm going to do a book. Do you want to see it? I said, well, that'd be very interesting. So he says, let's go. He walks me off. I'm walking behind him like the legend right in front of me, all the way down around the clubhouse, out to his car, huge car you may have read about with all this jazz in it. Kind of reaches in and gets this sheave of paper out with handwriting all over it. I don't know how many pages, hundreds. Doesn't really get into it, just sort of shows it to me, sticks it back in his car and back we went to the range. So fun memories with Mo. Hope when the video's over, you'll go below to the link there to my free three-part video course, Solid Strike Formula. Nice course, it's free to you. Hope you'll check that out. Okay, Mo Norman, 1987, as you can see there from the dates. He was born in 1929, so that puts him at about 58, which is roughly the mid-1980s is when I would have been around him a little bit. And in both cases though, huge gap between club and ball there at address. I'll tell you a little anecdote about that when we get uh, back outside in just a moment. But big, big space there and certainly more accentuated, I'd say, as he was older with getting his upper body behind the ball a lot. But it's the case in both. Now, let's have a look at him here in 1987. To me, that is a fantastic backswing. Great coil, great wrist cock, really loads some power. And the thing to my way of looking at it that he does that I like the most, I like a lot of things about his swing, is great change of direction. You look how long it takes before the club and the arms thrust down. In other words, beautiful sequence there, getting the downswing started. He retained that. You'll see that here. Wonderful two-way change of direction with the club going back and his body moving forward. Now, because he started so far behind the ball and he's got that ball teed up way in front of him there, on the right he needs a pretty sizable move over to his left side to recover and let's put uh adam scott up there there's a really conventional look setup etc so if you look at adam i mean with the ball forward he's slightly behind the ball he doesn't have to move so far to his left side to get to where he can hit it but obviously this worked for mo great movement to his left side beautiful solid look left arm and club one of the unconventional things i've mentioned it earlier but we'll see it from here you really stayed low in the shot he pushes his hips up but it's right after the fact at the end of that back at the end of that follow-through well as far as this setup of his put the club like a foot behind the ball i did actually ask him that once Probably a lot of people have asked him that. He said, look, this is the hardest part of the swings, the first foot or so, I just take it out. Well, I'm not a very original thinker, so I thought to myself, well, geez, I never thought of that. Maybe it's brilliant. Maybe it is brilliant, but that's optional. I certainly would say, though, that for most people to set up that far behind the ball, they would have a hard time consistently moving back into position. So sure, a little tilt for a driver is fine, but I wouldn't do as much as that. Now, we talked about things that great players you should copy or not copy. One of the things is I want to make this point. A lot of times players, especially from those days, said they did things or thought they did things they didn't necessarily do. So have one more quick look at Mo, one of his biggest keys, and let's see if he's really doing it. Then we'll get out and share some more stuff. So here's Mo. Let's watch the ball fly just to the left of that building. So I would put that directional marker at about that as an estimate. One of the things he said most in clinics that the more than anybody else he kept the club going up the target line longer and if we look at him great body rotation let's go one it's a long frame but it's one frame after impact the club's about there. In other words with all this body rotation the club's going around him as I think it should probably a lot more than he felt. That club is not staying on the target line. It has a very conventional exit point just by the left shoulder, but no doubt that was a key for him. He felt like he did it. He has this little sort of follow through where he pokes the club straight out and probably that gave him some sort of a feel for it too. Okay, so first thing with great players, don't just copy stuff that they say they do. They may not really be, there may be a personal key for them. Maybe it isn't really what they're doing. Second thing when copying great players, try to copy what's common amongst great players and things that fit your body style. Typically what people see, they see something with a lot of idiosyncrasy. Someone's great at it, Jim Furyk, Loop, or a hundred things. And they want to copy that and they think, hey, if I get the quirk there, all of the good stuff behind it will come. Likely not. Copy the traditional things that are, let's say, overlap between 
between great swingers. Now, talked about two reasons I think he was such a great ball striker. I think you find the second one interesting. First off, he hit millions and millions of golf balls, and he had a lot of talent, so he could sort of make it for three, four reasons, but first of my two, he had a great swing. We've been looking at that. All the things you'd want to do, loading the club, turning the body, getting on plane, all of these things he did super well. To me, that's the biggest, you know, one of the biggest keys why he's so good. The other thing, and I haven't really heard people talk about this, again, I'm not an expert on autism or whatever for sure, but uh, I could tell from being around him, as other people could, he didn't get in his own way too much. He just put the club down and bang, he was gone. He was not a guy that was able to self-interfere in a game. It's very easy to self-interfere. He got up there, he accessed the motor program, got out of his way, and just did it. I wish I could do more of that myself. I hope maybe you can instill a few of these great things from the great Mo Norman and make your game a little bit better as well.